A class war seemed impossible in a country where being wealthy is part of the national dream. But as thousands march on Wall Street and in other parts of America, protesting against the system that they claim works only for the benefit of a few super-rich individuals and corporations, many ask whether America is facing a class war. That at a time when the rich are getting richer while the middle class is collapsing, class warfare is being waged in America today. Unfortunately, the wrong side is winning. The so-called 1% of winners are the nation's top corporations, which this year, amid the economy's very slow growth, have nonetheless made record profits. But thanks to various loopholes... Many of these corporations pay little or nothing in taxes. The USA, the richest country in the world. This is where the Occupy Wall Street phenomenon started. It's now spread to most other rich countries and reflects deep dissatisfaction on a number of issues. Are these related to the wealth of the countries or directly to income inequalities within the countries? Let me introduce you to a couple of British researchers in social inequalities, Richard Wilkinson and Kate Pickett. Back in 2009, they published a book, The Spirit Level which claims that societies with more equal distribution of incomes have better health and fewer social problems. It was pretty disturbing stuff and inspired me to create this video of just some of their extensive evidence demonstrating the damaging effects of an excessive gap between rich and poor within a country. So starting off, they put together an index of social health a mixture of all sorts of factors ranging from life expectancy, homicide, obesity, to social mobility. The first graph shows this index against gross national income, how rich countries are on average, and of course the lower the index the better. And for emphasis, I've highlighted four countries, US and Portugal because they are at the extreme end of the world scale, and secondly, Sweden and Japan because they're culturally so different. Look at that, the US is twice as rich as Portugal, and yet it makes absolutely no difference to the health index. On the other hand, Sweden and Japan, which are so different, both show best on the health index. Adding the other countries, you can see that they're all, all over the place. Now, change the horizontal scale from national income to income inequality within a country. And this is based on how much richer the top 20% are than the bottom 20%. And you can see that a more equal country like Japan, the rich have 3.4 times the income than the poor in that country. But at the more unequal end, the differences are twice as big, with the US having a ratio of 8.5 times. Adding the rest of the countries, you can see that they form almost a straight line, getting worse in the more unequal countries. Let's look at some others. How about life expectancy in rich countries? Look at that. Portugal at the low end of the income has similar life expectancy as the USA at the top of the income scale. And when you add the other countries in, again, you can see there's just no relationship. They're all over the place. However, when the same data is plotted against income inequality, it shows that life expectancy is longer in countries with a smaller gap between the rich and poor. And the main cause seems to be the way that inequality makes life more stressful. Let's look at mental health. The World Health Organization has now established World Mental Health Surveys. And they showed that different societies have very different levels of mental illness. In some countries... Only 5 to 10% of the adult population has suffered from any mental illness in the last year. But in the USA, more than 25% have. Adding the other countries, the graph shows that mental illness is much more common in more unequal countries. Here's an interesting one. The London School of Economics suggested a way to measure social mobility to see whether the children of rich parents are also rich, and the children of poor parents remain poor. They use this method to compare social mobility in eight countries. And in these terms, countries with more equal income levels have higher social mobility. And it looks as if the American dream is far more likely for people living in Scandinavian countries rather than in the US. And so it goes on and on. I'll give you a quick glance at four examples. You can stop the video any time. On child well-being, 
While children in Britain fared less well than in any other country, those in the US hardly did any better. Infant mortality. Again, it seems to be related to the way inequality makes life more stressful. Here's a big one. The differences in teen birth rates between countries are striking. In the US, the teenage birth rate is more than 10 times higher than Japan. What about obesity? In the US, three quarters of the population are overweight and close to a third are obese. Before I wrap up, there are two more frightening ones that really capture the problem. Imprisonment. The statistics on imprisonment are disturbing. You can see that the vertical scale in this case is logarithmic. The US imprisons people at 14 times the rate of Japan. Most of the rising prison populations in the US over recent decades seems to be primarily the result of more punitive sentencing. And finally, homicide. There are fivefold difference in murder rates between different countries related to income inequality. In the US, a child is killed by a gun every three hours. An even more startling graph is the comparison of homicide rates in the US states and Canadian provinces. The rate increases with the inequality of income to a maximum ratio of 5 to 1. So what does it all mean? Although correlation of data on one graph doesn't mean that it is the cause of the problem. However, the sheer volume of the data concludes that bigger income gaps do in fact lead to deterioration in social relations, human capital and health. So what can be done? In Japanese companies, differences between the income of directors and employees used to be smaller. In corporate governance, leaders were sometimes given seats on the board. On the other hand, Sweden gets greater income equality through redistribution, through taxes, benefits and public services provided by a big state. The mounting pressure to stop tax avoidance by large corporations and to end tax havens is just a first step redistribution of wealth by making taxation progressive again. That's what will reduce the excessive concentration of wealth at the top. In a loud call for accountability, people want an end to the mess on Wall Street. Even nine-year-old Sam knows that something is not right. Because of the scams of Wall Street's fat cats, millions of Americans lost their homes. I think it's up to all of us. And it's just beginning.